So um, the first recording is already uploaded to the website, but I will send you the link later on on the Foreign Student Network or FSN. So you have access to the presentation, um, the PowerPoint and the recording, okay? Let me first introduce you to the IEEE staff. First one who's here with us is Matthew Lara, Associate Director of IEEE. You will be hearing from him later on. Also Padma Reddy is here with us. She's our International Student Advisor. My name is Supapit B.B. Kenti. I'm also an International Student Advisor. Next is Kylie Arieta. She's here with us today. She is our Program Coordinator. Next, Diane Gobrick, she's not in the meeting, but she's our immigration specialist. And of course, we have Desiree Martinez and Juliana Casillas, who are both our student workers. Um, Dr. Esquibel, I believe, is not here with us this morning, but we have a different recording if you would like to hear from her. Um, she's the Associate Dean of Graduate School. And if you have any questions, for the graduate school. So those of you who are pursuing master's or doctorate, um, if you have questions for graduate school, you can email gradinfo at nmsu.edu. Okay. So let's get started with a poll. Let me pull up the question. Number one, are you a graduate student or an undergraduate student? So of course, graduate, if you're pursuing a master or a PhD, and undergraduate is if you're pursuing a bachelor's or associates. All right, wow, looks like we have a good mix today. I'm still waiting for 15% more of the people to answer. Okay. Looks like we're good. Let me share the result. Okay, can you see the results today? Awesome, looks like most of us are graduate students and a few undergraduate students. Perfect. Question number two. Select one of the following. So which one applies to you? One, I am in the US. Two, I will arrive in the US soon. And three, I am taking online classes from outside of the US for the fall 2021 semester. Hopefully we'll see the first one the most. <laughs> and it's looking that way. All right, awesome. Give a few seconds. Okay, 100% answered. So let me share the results. We are very happy to see that most of you are already in the US and we hope to see those who will be arriving soon. And we have nobody who's taking online classes from outside of the US, so that's good to know. Okay. So let's go ahead and hand the presentation over to Kylie for new students in the US. Good morning, everyone. As Phoebe mentioned, I'm Kylie Arrieta, the International Student Program Coordinator for IEEE. I've probably talked to most of you already if you've taken new international student orientation. So for new students who are coming to the U.S. or will arrive in the U.S. soon, there's very important information you all need to be aware of regarding COVID-19 guidelines um, upon your arrival. So based off CDC guidelines, if you have arrived to campus from another country, either by plane or by vehicle, if you are vaccinated, you should get tested three to five days after travel and you should self-monitor for COVID-19 symptoms. If you are unvaccinated or you are partially vaccinated, please get tested three to five days after travel. And the biggest thing is that you need to stay home and self-quarantine for seven days. So there is a self-quarantine requirement um, for people who are unvaccinated or partially vaccinated. Please note if you have received only one of the two required doses, then you are not fully considered vaccinated if you've got a vaccine that requires that will require two doses. 
Um, please also note that if you receive vaccines that are not either Pfizer, or Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, then please contact the Aggie Health and Wellness Center for further guidance. They can let you know um, about acceptable, acceptable vaccines on campus. Um, additionally, Aggie Health and Wellness, that is their email uh, contact information. So you can contact them at that email. Aggie Health and Wellness is also offering free vaccines and they have, I believe, free COVID testing. So we definitely encourage all of you to go get a free vaccine and take advantage of that because it's quick, it's easy, and we want you guys to stay safe definitely while you're here on campus. Um, as far as mask requirements, students and staff are all required and expected to follow the current face covering guidelines. And MSU right now, if you are on campus, you will need a mask um, when you go into any NMSU building. And you will definitely need a mask when you come to the IS office and when you have an advising appointment. Right now, we're currently doing mostly virtual advising appointments, but if in the future you have a physical advising appointment, please remember your mask when you come into this office and when you have the appointment. And of course, we'll let you know um, as requirements change because they may, the pandemic is very fluid. And so um, please keep an eye out for NMSU notices regarding vaccines, testing, uh, testing as well as mask requirements. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, with regards to checking in uh, with our department. So as I mentioned, I may have already spoken to most of you about new international student orientation, but you will need to finish NISO or new international student orientation before you are able to register for classes. There are two parts to NISO. So part one is modules one through 32. After you have finished completing those modules, then you'll reach out to me and I'll be able to move your orientation holds and your insurance holds so you're able to register for classes. Then please remember that you still have one more module in NISO if you are coming in person to NMSU. That's module number 33. Um, the deadline to complete that module is this Friday, but if you have certain things that are going on, please reach out to our office and we can talk to you about that. But as soon as possible, it's very important that you submit um, documentation into module number 33 and complete your check-in video on campus. Okay, thank you, Kylie. That was very helpful information to know. So next, I will hand over the presentation to Padma. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well um, and uh, happy Wednesday. Uh, welcome to NMSU. I'm so glad to see so many new faces um, after a really uh, struggle uh, that you faced to come to the U.S. and you're getting these appointments or flight tickets. But welcome to NMSU. Um, you, uh, as an international student, uh, because you are an international student on an F1 visa, uh, there are some rules and regulations. The rules and regulations are implemented by Student in Exchange Visitor Program that is also called as SCBP, and they make the rules and regulations. And each student has to register for a required number of credits to be considered full-time. Um, and uh, for that, for, because of COVID, they have given uh, for the fall, yeah, for the fall 2021 and spring 2022, uh, as a graduate student, you have to register for nine credits. As an undergraduate, you have to register for 12 credits. Um, if uh, and of them, at least one class has to be hybrid or a classroom-based course. So please make sure that you have one. Um, and uh, there are exceptions to some full course load requirement, like border community students can, must be part-time. And uh, we will talk a little bit about reduced course load from ISS. Uh, and if you are in your final semester, then you can register for the uh, reduced course load and you have to submit a form. Uh, like you said, we will register, uh, we will help uh, talk about the reduced course load a little later. Uh, as a new student for fall 2021, uh, summer semester is an optional semester to you, uh, which means that you can register full time if you want, you can register part time or no credits, it's your choice. Uh, 
Um, okay, you can register for all online, all in person. There is no regulations for summer 2021 or any summer 2020. Okay, let's move on to the next one, please. Uh, I keep getting emails as to what is the definition of the hybrid class. Um, hybrid is defined as something which is both a combination of online and classroom instruction. The meeting days and times uh, will vary depending on the program or course. So please contact your academic advisor. If you're an undergrad, talk to, your, talk to the class uh, and they will help you. And if you're a graduate student, uh, then talk to your academic advisor. They will help you to tell you if it is a hybrid course or an in-person or online. Uh, and any registration of classes will be done by your academic advisor, not by ISS office. Uh, just to uh, remember, before you're eligible to re uh, register, you must complete MESO. Uh, if you have not completed your orientation or you have not received uh, the MESO email, please reach out to my colleague, uh, my colleague Kylie Arietta, and she'll be able to help you. Uh, graduate students, we recommend that you also attend the new uh, student graduate orientation hosted by graduate school. Um, and uh, more will be uh, talked later by Dr. Denise Escobar. We're hoping that she will join us soon. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to send an email to graduate school at gradinfo at nmsu.edu. Next, please. Uh, let's talk about what is a reduced course load. Uh, there are certain uh, categories that you can help to get a reduced course load. And all of these categories are only if you are in the first semester uh, in the US, you know, which means that you should not have been in the US prior at another school. Uh, that is what it means. If you have uh, studied at another school, uh, either at NMSU or any other school, then you are not considered for this academic difficulty. Uh, so if it is an improper course level placement, say uh, without finishing your prerequisite, uh, your academic advisor wrongly registered you for the academic course and you do not have any other courses, then, uh, then that could be considered for uh, improper course level placement. But you all have to submit, whoever wants to do this, have to submit the improper, the reduced course load form. And your academic advisor has to sign this, indicating that uh, there was an improper course level placement and the reason. And the second category is also initial difficulty with reading requirements. I know the reading requirements are quite different from your home country to the US. Um, so uh, that could be a reason. And third is unfamiliarity with American teaching methods. Uh, if, you, if you face that, then uh, please reach out to your academic advisor and help get the reduced course lot uh, completed form. And initial difficulty with English language. I know we. Uh, we, uh, you all have passed TOEFL or IELTS, uh, but uh, sometimes the accent from your home country to here is quite different. And for that reason, you can use the initial difficulty with English language. Now, uh, students may have any medical condition at any time. Um, uh, in that case, uh, we will need a doctor's note uh, and the students will need to complete the uh, reduced course load uh, form. And uh, uh, please do not drop the classes without ISS office uh, approving the reduced course load. Uh, it will take at least three to four business days for us to review and approve. So please consider that and uh, keep us posted. Um, for medical condition, uh, it has to be for the entire academic semester, for the, sorry, for the entire semester. It cannot be for uh, two weeks or three weeks. It has to be for the entire semester. Please do remember that. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email and I'll be glad to help you uh, with the reduced course load form. Next. 
you can find the reduced course load form uh, in this link. Um, and it is also there on our ISS website. You can go to current students and you will be able to find the forms. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a graduate student and have an assistantship uh, to be approved for, uh, because as a graduate student, you have to register for nine credits. And uh, if you want to continue on your assistantship, then graduate school also has to approve it. So please check with them too, okay? Uh, and once again, please do not drop your classes uh, until ISS approves your reduced course load. It is your responsibility to maintain a full course load at all times. Next. Okay, I want to understand how your I-20 looks like and how you can read. Please note, this is just a sample of an I-20 and we are only indicating the first half of the I-20, just so you understand. Please look at the red uh, arrow mark where you can see your civis ID. Each student, when we generate an I-20, will have their unique uh, ID, civis ID number. It will always start with the alphabet N, followed by two zeros and a number. Uh, that is how, that is your unique civis ID number. And the first rectangle will always reflect your personal information. Uh, it will start off with your first name, uh, last name, first name, and your country and uh, country of birth and citizenship, along with your city of birth and date of birth. Uh, the blue arrow mark is the most important one. This will indicate in what status you have arrived in the US. If you are a new student, then it will indicate as initial attendance. That means that uh, this is your first time arriving to an MSU and you have joined as a new student. Uh, that is what it means. Once you register for a full course load and have submitted all the documents, then uh, as DSO, our DSOs, our office is going to register you in the immigration uh, that you are in compliance for this semester. We have to do this for every new student and continuing student every semester until they graduate. Uh, the next uh, green arrow reflects our school information. Uh, the school's name is indicated here twice because New Mexico State University uh, is because uh, you, if a student is admitted to the main campus, that's why it's indicated twice. But if a student is admitted to our one of our community colleges like the ACC campus, then on the top will be New Mexico State, on the second one will be the DACC campus. And the academic advisor, the student advisor who issued the I-20, their name will also reflect here. Third is where your program of study, where you can look at. This is the student's program at, at what education level, what is the major the student is pursuing, and when does the class start date, and when does the program start date, and get it the ending. This is what we are going to learn here. At the education level, if you are a bachelor's student, then it will reflect bachelor's here. In the major section, if you are admitted to engineering, then it will reflect here. If you uh, are a, if you are a new student for fall 2021, this is where uh, it will reflect. And uh, currently, uh, for this uh, sample I-20, the program start date is 9th of August 2021 and the end date is 31st of August, 2023. It will depend very on the type of uh, education level that you are in, and it will be different for different students. So please check based on this. And because the semester began on, uh, will begin on August 18th, the start right? this is what is reflected on the I-20. Let's move on. Um, on the second page of your I-20, uh, it will again reflect uh, your ID number and your name. Uh, on this second page, uh, I have signed here for this particular student, uh, but uh, this uh, signature indicates that we, you have entered the U.S., you have submitted your U.S. address, uh, you have submitted your copy of your F1 visa, I-94, and I-901C, 
and you have a register for the required number of classes. And then we have a distributor in the immigration system. Only then we are eligible to sign on your I-20. Now this signature has to be renewed by our office every six months. So student, it is your responsibility to send ISS an email every six months. Hey Padma, can you please when you, uh, get a travel endorsement on the second page? This is important for the following reason. When you travel within New Mexico or outside of USA, uh, Border Patrol agents will look at the date. And based on this date, they will see that you are full-time registered student. Uh, and that's the reason why uh, it is very important for you to get this. It may be unpleasant to have you uh, start by the Border Patrol agent and they question you, and uh, I don't want that. Uh, you must have an uh, valid I-20 at all times to receive a travel signature on the second page. You have, uh, you have to be a full-time student. And students who are approved for reduced course load, whatever could be the reason, uh, can also get a travel endorsement because it is approved by our office. Uh, and the travel signatures are valid for six months. Next. Um, I know it is too early to talk about the extension, but I did want to talk about the extension. Uh, sometimes students are able to finish uh, within their program, uh, the start date and end date reflected on their I-20, but sometimes they are unable to. Uh, if you are unable to, then you can request for an I-20 extension uh, in the year that it is going to expire. In this uh, current sample that we have, the I-20 is going to expire on 31st of August, 2025. Please do not ask us for an extension this year because we are not yet in the year 2025. So for this particular sample, the student will have to send an email uh, in the year 2025. And you can find this link on our website too, or you can send us an email and we'll be glad to help you with that. Um, and uh, I also want to make sure, please make sure that your I-20 is valid at all times. ISS is unable to extend. We are uh, logistically not able to extend after it has expired. So please consider that uh, and please send your extension form at least 10 business days so that you are not uh, in any kind of a dilemma. Uh, Next is your passport. Each student will have their individual passport uh, and your visa will be there. Uh, you can legally stay in the US even on an expired visa. But if you want to travel outside the US and re-enter, you always have to have a valid visa. Uh, as an international student, two things are most important. Make sure your passport is valid at all times and your I-20 is valid at all times. If your I-20, if your passport is going to expire in less than six months, then you can contact your country's embassy and they will be able to renew your passport. Uh, some students are having issues because of COVID, their, uh, their embassy may be closed or taking a long time to renew their passports. If you can get a letter that you have already submitted an extension of your passport application, then that would be great. Uh, so that you are not uh, in any border, uh, any loopholes with the border patrol agents. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and any questions, please feel free to send uh, uh, the questions on the chat. Next. Uh, Dr. Esquivel is here. So Dr. Esquivel can't make it here today, but as I mentioned earlier, um, if you have any questions for the graduate school, feel free to email gradinfo at nmsu.edu. So thank you, Padma, and of course, Kylie, for our first half of the presentation. So right now, let's take a quick five minute break, stretch, drink water, and we'll be right back.
Okay, for those of us who are back here early, we have a pop quiz for you. Let me get the poll going. Okay, so those people who have already answered, wow, everybody got the correct answer so far. So here's a quick pop quiz time. Um, is it true or false? The required full course load for graduate students is nine credits and for undergraduate students is 12 credits. I think we're waiting for about five more people to answer. So let's give them a couple of more seconds. There's only one correct answer, of course. Okay. All good, let me end the poll now. Perfect. We're happy to hear that, that um, everybody got the right answer. So as Padma mentioned on the first part of the presentation, it's very important that you maintain a full course load, which is nine credits for graduate students and 12 credits minimum, of course, for undergraduate students. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Everybody got it right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you. Awesome. So let me share the second one. True or false? You need to have at least one in person or hybrid class. Hybrid class is the key word here is at least, right? So you need to have a minimum of one in person or hybrid class. Is that true or false? A slightly more difficult. <laughs> People are taking their time. Of course, only one correct answer. Okay, this one, I'm seeing a mix of responses. Okay, and ending poll, here's the results. So this one, we didn't have the perfect score, but that's okay. Um, the important thing here to remember is that you need at minimum one in-person or hybrid class. Okay, very important. Yeah, you can have more than one. If you're getting confused because of that, yes, you can have more than one in-person or hybrid class. Okay, but at least one is necessary. Sounds good. Okay, so the answer is true. So let's move on to the next part of the presentation, Padma. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Welcome back from your little break. Um, uh, tuition and fees charges are assessed uh, by U University Accounts Receivable Office, which is also called as UAR Office. Um, and uh, the off physical location of this office is located in the Educational Services Building. Um, along with UAR, you will also have the Graduate School, Undergraduate Admissions Office, and ISS Office, and also the Student Records Office. Everybody, we all are in the same Educational Services Building. So it's like a one-stop all. 
uh, for if you have any question, all the tuition and fees charges uh, will be posted to your student account. So you can look at your tuition charges. Um, and uh, for questions about tuitions and payment deadlines, uh, please look at their website and always be in compliance. We do not want you to get disenrolled because you did not pay your fees in full. ISS is unable to help you if you do not comply with it. Uh, you can also look at the various payment options. Uh, I know you are all international students and uh, some students may have to transfer money from their home country or uh, pay by credit card or debit card. All of those options are reflected here. For the current semester, tuition charges are reflected on this link. Uh, please check it out and uh, you will know the exact fees. Uh, and if you have any questions about the tuition charges, please reach out to UAR. Next. Uh, in continuation, students will have uh, tuition charges posted on their account as soon as they register for classes. At the beginning, uh, it will reflect as you have been charged for out of state. Although you may be having a discovery tuition rate uh, for students who are from Mexico, uh, students who have graduate assistantship and interna international competitive scholarship, and for students who have a uh, high school degree in the last academic year, they should be getting in-state, but then uh, the rate may not be reflecting. The rate may be reflecting uh, out of state, which is three times higher. I can understand students do panic. Please do not panic. Uh, the, the fees will be adjusted uh, after August 19th. So please do not worry. If you still think that the tuition fees are not adjusted, and especially if you are a discovery student, Please reach out to financial aid office and they will be able to help you. For others, you can reach out to, uh, for graduate assistant, uh, please reach out to your department uh, because they should be the one to be coding you as for in-state tuition. And if the coding is not in place, then that's the reason why it is reflecting as out of state. Uh, but for students who have international competitive scholarship, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you. Uh, for students who graduated from a high school, please reach out to undergraduate admission as they call you for in-state tuition. Thank you. Next. And MSU insurance uh, is valid uh, from August 1st, 2021, all the way through July 31st, 2022. The cost for insurance for fall semester is $804. It will be posted to your student account by ID Health and Wellness by the first week of September. Uh, as soon as you have registered for some classes, ISS uh, keeps sending the report to ID Health and Wellness and they will uh, update your information and uh, update your health insurance. If you don't pay your insurance charges in full by March 15, 2022, then you will not be able to register for future semesters because there will be a hold on your account. Please do make sure that you pay your insurance charges in full. If you have any questions uh, about insurance, please reach out to our insurance agent, Angela King, and you can find all of this information on our website too. Uh, as a continuing or a newly admitted student, and you will find that information. And please send her an email, and she will be able to answer all your queries about insurance-related questions. Make sure uh, if you have any sickness, your first point of contact should always be ID Health and Wellness, and then you can go to a specialized doctor if recommended by ID Health and Wellness. Next. Okay, how do you get your insurance card? Uh, I know most of your students must be interested in getting their uh, COVID vaccine or any kind of a testing. Uh, to get your ID uh, insurance card, you can go to ID Health and Wellness and request for one, and they'll be able to help you. Or you can go to the uh, 
GeoBlue website after they, uh, he health and wellness had registered. So currently you may not be able to get your uh, insurance card because they have not yet registered you in the insurance system. So please wait for a couple of days. And if you are unable to wait, go to any health and wellness center and they will be able to help you. Uh, for contact information about Aggie Health and Wellness, uh, their number is 575-646-1512. There is also the GeoBlue Relation Insurance, uh, and, uh, and we have given you the contact information here. Next. Now, some students have uh, insurance uh, from their home country or if they have coverage from a government sponsored plan or uh, they are a US based employee sponsored plan, then they may be waiting. Uh, please do not email us the insurance uh, card to ISS office. In, uh, ISS does not have the ability to look at your insurance to look at its validity or its coverage. Uh, please email Angela King and she will be able to look at your. Uh, insurance guideline, uh, guidelines and the coverage. And if it meets NMSU guidelines or is it higher, then uh, she will waive the insurance requirement, which means that you will not be charged for the insurance for that particular semester. If you want to continue with the insurance waiver, please submit the, uh, the coverage details to Angela King every semester. Uh, remember that for fall, the deadline to uh, apply for a waiver is August 31st. And for spring, the deadline to apply for waiver is January 31st. Failure to obtain an insurance waiver by the deadline uh, will lead uh, the students to be charged for insurance and they are liable to pay. Next. OK, thank you, Padma, for the helpful information. Thank so you. next, I will hand the presentation over to Matthew. Thank you, Bibi. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening to everybody. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to join us um, for this important information. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about employment. Um, it's very important that you understand the regulations that go along with employment for international students. Uh, and again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So as an F1 student, you are eligible to work on campus, but you are eligible to work on campus only, okay? You can work for up to 20 hours per week when school is in session. As an F1 student, you're eligible to work on campus only for more than 20 hours per week when school is not in session. So that's like the summer break, winter break, spring break, those, those uh, times during the academic year when school is not in session, you can work more than 20 hours. When school is in session, you can only work up to 20 hours, okay? Now this next point is very important. At any given point, you are not eligible to work off campus without prior approval from the International Student and Services Office, okay? And when I say that, I actually mean we get approval from the federal government. It's not us granting the approval. We submit a request on behalf of the student and the federal government approves it. It's very difficult to get those approvals, okay? So just, just uh, working off campus may be considered a serious violation of your immigration status. And you know, for more information, you can reach out to us. But again, F1 students are eligible to work on campus only, okay? You cannot work off campus. Next slide, please. All right, so in order to work on campus, you will need a social security number and we can help you with that. Uh, social security number is assigned to people who are authorized to work in the US 
If you get an on-campus job, you must apply for a social security number at the local social security office. You have to bring some documents, okay? You have to bring a completed application for the social security number. You have to bring your I-20, you have to bring your passport, your visa, and the IS letter of support. Now that letter of support we'll talk about here in a minute, but it's very important uh, uh, part of the documentation packet. You can see a, a reminder here, and it's very important. Uh, there are all kinds of scams out there associated uh, with a social security number. Scammers are always trying to get people's social security numbers because with the social security number, uh, they can open up credit cards, take out loans, things like that. So never provide your social security number via phone or email to anyone. Even if they call and, and, or email and they say they're from our office, do not give it out. The, the, our office, the NMSU police, any law enforcement in the, in the US, federal and local banks, those types of offices, they will never call you or email you asking to provide your social security number. So just keep that in mind. So social security numbers and driver's license. Uh, if you have an on-campus employment, graduate assistantship, if you're a tutor or anything like that, you will need uh, an ISS letter of support for your social security number, okay? So please email us your on-campus employment offer letter by August 16th, okay? If you've got, if you've already got an on-campus employment and you've got the offer letter, please email it to us at issss at nmsu.edu by the 16th, okay? Make sure that you include your name and your Aggie ID number and your date of birth, okay? Anytime you're reaching out to us by email, always include those three items, your name, your full name, your Aggie ID number and your date of birth, okay? So mail that offer letter to us by the 16th, and then you will be able to pick up your letter of support from the IISS office on August 19th, okay? If you need a driver's license, you also need an IISS letter of support. Please contact our office to arrange a pickup of your, your driver's license letter of support after August 19th. Okay, we're gonna take care of the social security number requests first, and then after August 19th, we'll start taking care of the driver's license. Okay, one more time, uh, and you'll probably hear this often because we can't say it often enough, when you're reaching out to us, please always include your full name, your Aggie ID number, and your date of birth. Okay. okay. I think that's it for me. Yes, that's it, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so the next part I'm going to skip because there's no students who are taking online classes from outside of the US. So let's jump straight into the last part of the presentation, which is answering all your questions. So I have gathered a lot of questions from you. So thank you so much for sending in the questions. Um, I have organized them by topic. So the first one, the, a lot of these questions are related to health. So let's go ahead and jump in to these questions. The first one is, where do I stay for quarantine? after arriving on campus. Uh, check with housing. And they will be able to help you if you are quarantined and if you do not have, uh, if you have not taken uh, any vaccination. Uh, last semester, they were uh, able to help students who had to self-quarantine. Uh, so, uh, please check with housing. Yeah, if you're living on campus, if, yeah. if you're living on campus, check with housing. If you're living off campus, it's kind of the honor system. You're going to have to self-quarantine and, and, you know, we can't be there checking on you. 
but it's it's the honor system and that you can always also reach out to the Aggie Health and Wellness Center. They can help you with that. They can provide good answers uh, to to those kinds of questions as well. All right. Thank you. Next topics. There are a lot of questions about the TB test. How does that work? How do I upload the documents? So let's get started with where do I get tested for TB? Sorry. Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, you can get your TB test at Aggie Health and Wellness. Initially, they will charge you for uh, insurance um, for the uh, TB test, but then, uh, uh, but then they will, um, uh, you will get back that money uh, once you have the insurance in place. Uh, so please check with Aggie Health and Wellness um, and let me post the link to the Aggie Health and Wellness. Uh, there we go. Uh, you can, uh, there is the contact information and if you want to get a COVID vaccine too, if you check on this uh, link and if you scroll slightly down, there is a, a Pfizer vaccination free and uh, please get it done as soon as possible. And TB test can be done at Aggie Health and Wellness. You just have to give your name and Aggie ID or your ID card and they will do it. And it's by appointment basis usually because of COVID. I don't think uh, they have any lockdowns, but please do call them and make an appointment. And uh, on module 33, you are able to upload your TB test and uh, results. Um, in the question, uh, I'm not sure the exact question, but uh, in module 33, there is a, a question for TB test and you can upload your information there. And just to clarify, there are three different types of TB document that you can upload. The first yes. one is the proof of appointment. The second one is the test result. And the third one is um, the TB clearance note. So for example, if you have already done your TB test from a different state or a different country, you will need to submit that test to Aggie Health and Wellness Center and they will issue a clearance note saying, okay, you don't have to take a new TB test. So all of these three documents have to be obtained from the Aggie Health and Wellness Center. If you have a, a different TB test, um, please submit it to Aggie Health and Wellness um, and they will send you like a, a clearance note or they may, they may ask you to go in and take a new test, okay? Um, I think I answered a lot of questions. So people are asking, what if I already had a TB test from a different place? Just to emphasize that you need to go to Aggie Health and Wellness Center anyways to get a document, okay? All right, so next question, we're still staying in the same topic. So this student has a TB test appointment after August 18th, which is the deadline for the orientation. Is that a problem? Uh, no, it is not a problem, but uh, we want you to get it. Uh, if you have uh, a TB test appointment, please upload it on our website. So it will not be a problem for you. Thank you. Okay, so the same answer for this one, but let me ask the question anyway. Um, my seven days quarantine ends on August 14th. I already took the COVID test and the result is negative. So I can't take the TB test that needs to be submitted by August 13th. What do I need to do? Uh, please just make an appointment uh, with Aggie Health and Wellness. Uh, I know I understand you are in self quarantine and thank you so much for doing that and uh, helping New Mexico stay healthy. Um, and uh, you can just get an appointment, call them and make an appointment after August 14 and upload the document uh, onto our website uh, and indicate that you are on self quarantine and uh, you will not have any issues. Thank you. Thank you, Padma. Last question on the TB test and if you still have more questions on the TB test, feel free to email us. So the last question on TB is, 
I took my TB test the day before yesterday and the result is not yet available. And I uploaded the appointment details document. Would that be okay? Yes, it would be okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, next question is still about health. So the question says, I need to book an appointment with the medical personnel. I need the COVID vaccine. How do I go about that? Sorry, Padma, you're still muted. Sorry, uh, sorry about that. Uh, you can still go to Aggie Health and Wellness Center to get a COVID vaccine, which is free of cost to students. Um, here is the link and you can book up the appointment here. Okay. All right, moving on to employment related questions. The first question is, since I have a teaching assistantship, the classes that I need to teach will begin soon. Will the HR department contact me at some point or will it be taken care of by the ISSS or graduate school? I mean, do I need to submit any documents to HR before August 13th? Uh, I'm not aware of this process. Uh, I'm not aware of this process. Uh, if you have a teaching assistantship, you have to uh, complete module number 33. And uh, please do not try to submit your I-9 before August uh, 18th. Uh, it may not uh, be active yet. Uh, it will all depend on your submission of your documents and reprocessing your civic registration. So uh, please do not do that before August 18th, but I'm not aware if you need to submit any documents to HR. Uh, please do check with HR uh, if they need any documents. From what I know, I don't think so, but I would definitely double check with HR. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm not sure what ITA stands for, so maybe. Padma, Kylie, yeah. or Matthew will know. Okay, the question says, I want to know how we can get the ITA test to be eligible for the assistantship. So for the ITA in the past, we had Center for English Language Program, which was also called SELF, and they would screen prospective uh, teaching assistants uh, for the ITA screening. And uh, if they were uh, given a green signal, then they were eligible to teach students. Uh, but now self, uh, we have closed self uh, because of its poor performance uh, way back in uh, end of spring 2020. Uh, right now, nobody is going, um, but you can contact English department and they may be able to help you with the ITA screening. Uh, I have got this request from uh, students and also uh, by the departments. Uh, currently, we are unable to help. Uh, but please reach out to English department, they may be able to help. Okay. So for the social security letter, do we need the graduate assistant offer letter or a contract? I'm not sure what is the contract, but the graduate assistantship offer letter will suffice for me to write a support letter for the SSM. Okay. Moving on to immigration related documents. Let's start with the I-20. So this student changed his major um, and also education level from PhD to master's. Does he need a new I-20? Definitely, yes. Um, please contact the ISS office and uh, uh, email us with your full name and Aggie ID number and they will be able to issue a new I-20 reflecting the changes. You always need to have an I-20 reflecting your current major and current education level at all times. Thank you. So the next question is about the I-94 form. Now it's just a different form. What mm -hmm. is an I-94? Um, I-94 is uh, uh, is a form uh, which you can generate it online. In the good old days, it would be stable to your passport right where your visa is. Uh, but uh, now it is all electronic, excepting if you're coming by road 
uh, if you are a Mexican student or traveling by road. Uh, but if you are flying, then it will automatically be reflected on the website. Uh, I can give you the link uh, in a bit, uh, but the, uh, you have to check for your I-94. You have to type in your name uh, and uh, your country that issued you the passport and your date of birth, and you will be able to uh, get your I-94. I-94 will reflect uh, your name, uh, your uh, date of birth, and the country that issued you the passport, and also on what visa did you enter. This is very important because we have to make sure that you have entered US on an F1 visa. If you have entered on any other visa other than F1, then you are not eligible to study in the US. That's the reason why we always ask for the I-94. And that's the same case if you are, have an assistantship and uh, HR will also ask for your I-94. So what if my I-94 appears as not found on the CBP website? Uh, it usually takes 24 hours to update it. If you're still not able to find it, then uh, you have to please reach out to ISS office because that's not a good thing. Uh, you have to go back to Santa Teresa and get a new I-94. Okay. Is the I-94 the same form as the I-901? Sorry? Is the I-94 form the same as the I-901? No, I-94 reflects, uh, will, you will be able to get it after you have entered the US. Um, I-901 is for uh, payment of your service fee. So when ISS issues you an I-20, uh, you have to pay the service fee of $350. In the past, it was $220, but now they have increased uh, the rate to $350. So the current fees are $350. And uh, you have to show the I-901 fee uh, and your I-20 and your passport when you're trying to get your visa at the U.S. consulate. Uh, if you do not pay your I-901 fee, then uh, even if you register for classes and you are in the U.S., uh, ISS will not be able to register you in the immigration system until you pay the I-901 fee. Uh, and after one month, your I-20 will be auto-terminated by the system and you will have to go back to the country. So please remember to, if you uh, haven't paid your I-901 fee, to pay it immediately. Thank you, Padma. Sure. So how do I get the I-901 form? Um, let me give you the link and then we can talk. Um, here is the link uh, to retrieve. Your, if you have already paid, you can retrieve it multiple times. You just have to print it out. You have to give your uh, full name uh, and uh, your details and then you will be able to retrieve it back. And if you haven't paid, please go ahead and pay now using that link. Okay. And of course, um, these two things that we asked for, the I-94 and the I-901 forms mm -hmm. are listed on module number 33. And we have the instructions on there too, on how to get to right. these forms. There's the link that you can just click and it will take you directly to those pages. Um, speaking of the check-in, this question said, I think I saw that we would have to upload this video after the meeting. I wonder if this is the video, um, so we need to upload it. Uh, you will need to upload your, that you have arrived in the US and you are on campus. That's the video that you need to upload on module number 33. So these are two different, completely different things, right? Mm -hmm. For yeah. this session that we're in right now in Zoom, it's a meeting that we want to have you on and explain some things and let you ask questions. But the check-in video, you have to film it. So there are three locations and you see the pictures and the Google map locations of where to go. So you can choose one, um, an example, a popular one, 
is Pistol Pete statue right outside of Corbett Center. So you just take your cell phone and do a selfie video and just say your name, your Aki ID and what you're interested in. Um, we need this video because we have to confirm that you are indeed on campus. So if you have not done so, please double check module 33 and look for the instructions of what needs to be in the video and where it needs to be filmed. Okay, it has to be very specific locations and we need to see some landmarks on the background. So it's either Pistol Pete statue um, or the sundial clock in front of Hadley Hall or, or number three is the duck pond, okay? You're welcome for the clarifications. I'm glad you asked that. Um, I think it's a common question that we've been getting. So thank yeah. you for the question. All right. Um, circling back to health and vaccines. Mm -hmm. So this student said, I booked the vaccine for tomorrow and just received confirmation from the New Mexico Department of Health that the appointment is canceled because I'm under 18, 18 mm -hmm. years old. So will I need to get the vaccine still at the Aki Health and Wellness Center? Yes. I guess so. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I would I, recommend. Uh, I would, go ahead, Matthew. I would recommend contacting the Aggie Health and Wellness Center with that question. Um, because you're under 18, you are considered a minor. And I think for uh, people under 18, uh, parents' permission is needed for the vaccination. And so, yeah, I, I would recommend you contact Aggie Health and Wellness Center and let them know I am under 18. Can I still get a vaccination? What do I need to get a vaccination? Thank you, Matthew. And that's the one thing that's very important to remember during this COVID time is things change a lot. Um, we could be telling you, hey, you need to wear a mask now, but tomorrow it could be different. So the best place to get your most accurate and up-to-date information is the Aki Health and Wellness Center. Okay, um, moving on to financial aid. Are there any programs for international students for financial support? Any COVID related funds that we can apply to? You can reach out to Dean of Students. Probably they may have some, uh, but that is the only source that I can think of. And you can also reach out to Aggie Health and Wellness. They may have some resources for you. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. So for the Dean of Students though, that is, that's gonna be an Aggie emergency request fund. So that what you would have to do is you would meet with the Dean of Students Committee. Um, and when you're going to meet with that committee, it is for emergency funding. So um, just be aware of that, that they're considering it from, from that perspective. So it's not necessarily just a fund for you know, every day, but it's for emergency requests. And I saw earlier in the chat, Kylie was explaining a little bit about the payment plans. Could you go over that again? Yeah, NMSU offers a payment plan, which is a really good option. If you do not want to pay your tuition in full every semester, um, you can get on the payment plan and then you can start making payments. So I put the link in the chat if you want to scroll up and I can go ahead and put it um, in the chat again. And if you enroll in the payment plan before August 29th, then the fee that is associated with the plan to apply for the plan, it's waived. So you will not have to pay the $25 application fee for the payment plan. So I'll go ahead and put that link in the chat. Thank you, Kylie. So going back to social security a little bit. Um, so if a student has or was on an OPT before coming to NMSU and they already have an, a social security number, do they need to get another one? No, uh, you, you, you don't need another one. You just need only one and that will be for your lifelong. Okay. 
So if a student is arriving late with the department's approval um, before August 27th, will it be a problem if they request the social security after the 16th? No, it will not be a problem. Uh, but the more important question is if you are arriving after August, uh, before August 27th, uh, after you arrive, complete module number 33 and then reach out to our office and then we will be able to help you with the SSM letter. Uh, unfortunately for you, because you have not yet uh, in the US, uh, we cannot write uh, an ISS support letter at this time, but we will be glad to help you after your arrival in the US. Thank you. And I would like to add that, of course, now a lot of departments may be hiring and you may get a job later on, right? It doesn't have to be before <laughs> August um, 19th. If you get a job later on in November or whenever, um, email us your offer letter and we'll help you with the support letter. So unfortunately, unlike the I-20, the support letter for social security and driver's license has to be hand signed physically by um, the DSO. So that's why you would need to pick up the letter and we can't email it to you. Okay. Um, let's see, going back to the I-94. So if a student has not entered the U.S., will they have I-94 form? Uh, if a student hasn't yet entered the U.S., then they will not have uh, I-94. Um, they will only be uh, able to retrieve the I-94 after they have entered the U.S. Uh, after 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a question about honor school and I think Padma already answered it. So please contact the honor school if you have any questions. Um, let's see, I hope I have answered most of the questions. If not, please go ahead and drop in in the chat again. There was a question about where we'll get a copy of the recording of this meeting. So um, once we have finished the meeting, I will double check the attendance and I will make sure that you are added, your email is added to the FSN listserv so that you receive future communications from IEEE-S and the international student community. So let me double check that your email is on there and then I will send the link to the recording and also the PowerPoint. So you can refer to this later on. Okay. Um, one question um, about module 33. It says that the question says in module 33, I mentioned that I need to take the ELPT, but when I cross checked it, I got to know that I don't need any test. I tried to change the status, but it isn't possible. So will this be a problem? So um, I was not very clear. Did the English department tell you that it is not uh, it is not uh, for you to be required to take uh, an ELPT test? If so, then uh, the English department will end their poll for you. And if that is not the case, please reach out to our office and explain clearly uh, why uh, you were waived of the requirement uh, at this time. Um, so we can talk to the right appropriate office. Okay. All right, so I believe this is the last question unless somebody has something else. So if the question says, um, since I'm expected to complete module 33 by August 13th, but I will be late, what do you advise I do so that I do not encounter any problem? Um, if you are arriving late and uploading your documents late, then uh, everything will be late for you. Uh, and if you have a graduate assistantship, uh, it will be later too. And if you need an SSN letter, that will also be later for you. So try to upload it before August 16th, if not by 13th, uh, so that uh, you are in compliance. Okay. 
another question came in that said, I'm using my personal email to join the orientation rather than an MSU email. Would that be a problem? Uh, yes, that's a problem. Um, students are not able, unfortunately, to be added to a uh, new international student orientation by their personal emails. Your email has to be an NMSU school email. So if you have not already activated your NMSU school email, please do so and then let me know. And then I'm able to put you into the MISO course. Okay. And if I'm reading the question differently, the student could be referring to this Zoom session. So don't worry for this um, Zoom session for the attendance. I'll look at your name and I'll make sure to um, locate the right person. Um, it should be pretty easy by using your personal email. I can look up other information. So don't worry, you'll get credit for attending. Um, but of course, moving forward, please make sure to regularly use your NMSU email when communicating with ISSS or for school related um, matters, okay? Absolutely, we cannot uh, emphasize that enough. The, your NMSU email address will be the email address that the university will communicate to you via, okay? Um, it, that's it. Any official correspondence, email correspondence coming from NMSU, including anything from us, the International Student and Scholar Services Office, will go to your NMSU email address and no other. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Matthew. Next question, do we receive any confirmation once we complete module 33? No, you will not receive any confirmation, uh, but we will register you in the immigration system. You just have to upload the documents, make sure you have uploaded, and if there is anything missing, then we will reach out to you. Yes, definitely. Um, um, no news is good news for you. For module 33, because we're kind of getting the same question about it. So what you should do for module 33 is you should upload any documents that you can as soon as possible. If you have the documents, upload them in module 33. If there are some documents that you can't upload because you need to be here physically at NMSU, um, just wait until you're able to upload those documents. But the biggest thing to remember is upload everything you can as soon as you can for module number 33. Okay. So a lot of great questions today. Um, it looks like there are no more questions. So um, if you have further questions, of course, feel free to email us at ISSS at nmsu.edu. Oh, and here's the link. I mean, the email, not the link. Our email, of course, which you should know pretty well by now, but I just wanted to have it on and remind you. Um, if you have any questions for undergraduate admissions, the email address is also listed. It's admissions at nmsu.edu. For graduate school, um, of course, the email is gradinfo at nmsu.edu. But feel free to, um, if you have any questions, even if you don't know where to start or which department you need to go to, let us know and we'll connect you with the correct people. Okay. With that said, I would like to thank everyone for attending. Um, thank you, of course, Matthew, Padma, and Kylie for your time and answering the questions and going over the presentation today. With that said, um, any final thoughts from, let's go with Matthew and then Kylie and then Padma. Uh, just in closing, I again wanna thank everybody for um, attending this important session. And um, I hope for those of you that are already in the US, I hope to see you on campus soon. Uh, and those of you that are planning to arrive soon, safe travels and uh, reach out to us if you need any help. If you, if you have any more questions, uh, I think we've provided the email address quite uh, extensively during this presentation. Um, and uh, I look forward to, to seeing you all on campus this fall.
Thank yeah, you. Yeah, welcome. Taking your valuable time. But Ali, go ahead. That's okay. No, welcome to campus, everybody. And if you're on your way, as Matthew said, please be very safe. And we are excited to see you guys soon. Um, we're excited to just welcome you all as new international Aggies. Uh, if anybody out there is still working through NISO, please reach out to me if you have any questions so we can get you through NISO and then we can get you registered for classes as soon as possible. But thanks for joining us today. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys in person soon. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, thank you all for attending uh, NISO final um, check-in video, Zoom uh, webinar. And uh, we wish you all the good luck and uh, feel free to send us an email. Uh, please remember that when you send us an email to always include your full name and your Aggie ID number so we can answer your question immediately. Uh, delays may be there because if you send it to your NMS, non nms 2 email or personal emails. So please use your nms 2 email for all communication and uh, anything related to nms 2 issues, we will only communicate to your NMS2 email going forward. So please try to use that uh, for all purposes. Um, and welcome and have a wonderful, wonderful semester and a great beginning. And please remember that ISS is always there to support you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great semester. Bye. Have a good day.